Okay, it's July 24th, 2021. Time for a little update on this meadow after we burned it back there in March. We really have hit our peak bloom, at least our peak summer bloom on the meadow here. We'll do a walk through and see. Sumac's rebounded quite well from being burnt. Didn't expect much less from them. They probably flushed out even more actually. You can see how their tops have not leafed out for the most part. It really got stunted. They sure put out a lot of extra growth down below as a result. Keep trimming them out of the pathway. They're shooting up on the other side, so something we'll have to pay attention to. But now as we're end of July and that, that peak summer bloom time, our grasses are starting to show themselves. The big blue stem showing its turkey's foot. You can see it all the way across the meadow. And it just shows summer is a short-lived season here in Ontario. It's early goldenrod, so it's not a sign that it's fall quite yet, but you're getting to that midsummer. Next thing you know, the asters will start opening up. Our showy tick trefoil. It's sort of in its decline, it's a little bit past its peak bloom. I've noticed every year, it must be very fragrant and attractive to the Japanese beetles because they really cover this plant. You see, it doesn't seem to do it any harm. If anything, after the burning, this plant is, um, is quite happy. The bushes of it seem to have gotten quite a bit larger. I noticed more of them. One that really seemed to enjoy or appreciate the burn to the ground. I might have said in one of the other videos, this upper corner of the meadow has always been predominantly grass and not as much of the wildflowers. You know, it could very well be that when I spread the seed mixture, I didn't have it mixed as thoroughly, or, you know, what tends to happen is heavier seeds, or the bigger seeds end up staying at the top, and a lot of the real fine, small stuff goes to the bottom of the bag when you're hand distributing. It could be that I just had more of the grass thrown up here in this area. It makes a, a great spot, you know, your big blue stem. You know, some of the individuals have really amazing colors on them. This is where when you start to see the different cultivars in the nursery trade, they're just selecting the seed and crossbreeding with other colorful ones. This round-headed bush clover, big cluster of it here. It's not open in bloom yet. You sort of cut through the heart of the meadow here. It's a 
Lots of little specimens of grass. Monarda, early goldenrod. Still some Queen Anne's laced. Speckled through. And quite full of the Virginia Mountain Mint. Just typically just covered in little insects. Pretty much all the white that you see in here is a Virginia Mountain Mint. Just a real big year for blooming. Between the heat and the rain, it's a lush, a lush year. For any uh, lawns and gardens, and the meadow is no different. It can definitely handle the hot and dry without suffering too much. But you give it a year with lots of water and you really see the blooms. Also interesting on different parts of the property, depending on the soil type, how big the plants can get. You know, this individual clump of big blue stem is you know, at least six and a half feet tall. Same with throughout this area. And then other parts, it'll be you know, chest high, five feet or so. But up in here, we've got several feet of rich topsoil. And the swath of big blue in here is, is quite substantial. Big large grouping here of showy tick trefoil. You know, great out in the meadow. Maybe not the best to put in a residential garden. It's get quite large and quite floppy and the seeds really do stick to you. You walk through them, these get embedded in your clothes pretty, pretty good. Obviously is how it spreads. On the fur of animals, you can see the tiny seed pods getting started. Those will get larger and brown and have a little Velcro apparatus to them. Not the best to walk through. Or let your dog walk through but really pretty plant from afar and as you saw the bees are quite fond of it Red-winged blackbird flying above me here. Doesn't like my presence. I have a nest nearby. Those guys can be a little aggressive, so hopefully I don't get dive bombed. <laughs> 